Okay, hey guys. So this is the layout sketch in pencil for the latest Inktober drawing, Inktober number five. The prompt word is flame. And for this, I um, used my own hand as reference. Very simple. And um, just sort of put the match in there from memory. That's what a burnt match looks like. But I've seen a bunch of burnt matches in my life and they kind of curl like that. So it should be pretty easy to ink that part. Let's zoom in here for a bit of a closer look at this pencil layout. You can see the outline as well as some of the shadowed areas, which I've marked here loosely, and some of the highlighted areas, which I've also outlined as well, to give me some idea so that once I start inking, I can dive right into that. The halo around the flame is going to be, I think, kind of scribbled lines, uh, concentric rings around the flame, which will get progressively thicker as we go outward away from the flame. And then I'm going to do this kind of a checkered hatch pattern. Those two different um, values I covered in my last Patreon video. So I'm hoping to try those out on this piece here to give you guys an idea of how that can be applied to a drawing. So that being said, let's get into the inking process. Okay, let the inking begin. I've got a G nib here, which is a fairly common nib. And I'm starting off with the match stick, at least this part of it, since it's uh, in front of this finger, starting there. And thumb, the tip of the thumb. Here's the thumbnail. I'm kind of doing the outline at first. which is just my inking style. It was nice to be able to use my hand as a model for this. And it's always great when you draw something you can you can either find a good reference for it or potentially use yourself as a as a model for part of it. It really saves a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how something would look. And the plus side of that is the more that you do that, the more that you do draw from life, the less you actually rely on it because it becomes kind of ingrained in your memory if you draw something like a hand a certain number of times it does get easier so like drawing something from life the first time isn't easy but it gets easier as you draw from life and then eventually you don't even really need that hand in front of you as reference because you've you've done it so often that you can just think in your mind okay this knuckle would go here. This is how the skin folds there. And it uh, is really very valuable. I'm gonna start here with the darkest shadows and then work my way to the light. So I've switched to the Hyro 41. It's a more flexible nib, allows me to lay down more ink. leaving a very narrow gap between the lines.
drawing this line here helps to helps to um, differentiate these lines that I'm drawing now for the uh, second finger from this finger behind it. Otherwise, even though the, the lines are curved slightly differently, they are more or less going in the same direction, and so there could be some confusion there visually. So that just helps to make a little break there for the eye. So here's where we're at so far, and it certainly doesn't look too impressive, but I just wanted to call out on this stage that your artwork is always going to go through that stage where you think you could do way better or something doesn't look quite right to you and you think I could just restart it, redo it, and it really is important to stick with it. Stick with your first attempt and see it all the way through because it's going to reach a point as you work it where it starts to come back around and it starts to look like the piece that you're envisioning. So I'm going to start putting a lot more details into here, adding, thickening some lines, working with the shading, and we're going to see it start to come together. So let's keep going. So now I'm cross-hatching this furthest back shadow of the hand with the Hyro 41, of course. And I'm using a pretty thick line. I'm crossing it at about a 45 degree angle, somewhere in there. So I want to make this a, a decent heavy shadow. Right. 
So you can see how it's starting to develop interest. We've got different uh, levels of hatching, cross hatching, different tones going on. And as you increase the tones, the drawing becomes more interesting and it starts to look a little better. It just takes time and like I mentioned before, you just have to work through that point, which almost every drawing has where it just doesn't look as good as you know it can. And you just have to trust that it's it's going to pull through that stage and it's going to look better. So now we get to the fun part. We get this charred and bent end of the match. The very tip isn't too black because it's still burning and it's gonna be mostly ash. So as we go out to the tip, it's going to be a little more gray. It's actually more, it's going to be more black and burned down here. Like that. And it's looking pretty good so far. The hand is mostly done. The flame and match are mostly done. I'll probably dive into the hand and do a little bit more detail uh, hatching, maybe some cross hatching in there. But I want to keep it fairly simple. I don't want to overcomplicate it too much. And the majority of the work remaining is going to be on the background, the, the halo around the flame, as well as the hatched pattern in the background. So, back to the inking.
I've gone in with a pencil and sketched some different ideas of, of uh, patterns to see how they might look. I'm just checking to see if maybe it would look a little too busy or if it would conflict with the overall composition. And I kind of like the way that this uh, pattern of short hatch marks looks. So I'm going to go with that and see how it goes. For this, I'm going to be using the Trusty Hunt 101. And I'm just going to start right here. It's as good a place as any. Okay, so I've got the hatching done in the background. Now I just need to do the halo around the flame. And I've kind of gone back and forth as to how I'm going to do this. I think what I settled on is I'm going to do um, a very widely spaced hatching and um, just kind of have a wider band of hatching. Three, three bands um, getting a little bit wider as you go out with the narrowest being closest to the flame and uh, I'm just going to try and keep it kind of simple and um, yeah see how it works you know you don't always know exactly how something is going to look until you do it and it can be a little nerve-wracking at times because you don't want to ruin your drawing, 
but at the same time, sometimes you just got to go with it. Just uh, keeping it light. Most of the lines I'm I'm having arranged in sort of a ray fashion, where they're like light rays radiating out. But I'm also going to break them up periodically with. Uh, some angled lines, perpendicular lines, just to sort of allow it to blend more with this part. If they were all radiating out, they might um, look a little bit too distinct from this. I wanted it to kind of blend in a little bit with the rest of that backdrop. That's the idea anyway. Actually looking not too bad. I'm just going to continue in this fashion all the way around and then I'll do the next circle and the next. So here's the effect that I created. I'm pretty happy with it. It didn't turn out maybe as good as I had hoped, but it's something different. And I think that's a key point to take away from this drawing for me is um, how important it is to try something new. And even if you're not sure how it's going to come out, you know, sometimes the best thing to do is just to experiment because you might run into something that you hadn't expected and it could be better than you planned. So you just never know. I'm glad that I did it this way. I did learn a few things. It was a good way to practice my, my hatching technique and just a new way to depict um, a radiating flame halo like this. I've never quite done it in this way, so it's interesting to see how that style and how this hatch style works with my traditional illustration style, which I used on the hand and the match. So overall, it was a fun project. And uh, I'm going to look forward to doing a few more of these process videos during Inktober for you. And hopefully you had as much fun watching it as I did making it. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.